uh, an opportunity to both extend their life when their life expectancy is extremely brief, uh, as well as to improve their quality of life because often these patients are extremely short of breath, are homebound, are very you know, disabled by their lung disease. So this is something that we do both for improving the length of their life, saving their lives, and improving their quality of life as well. There are two main surgical options for patients who have lung disease that is at its, its end stages or no other medical treatments are available. The first is lung volume reduction surgery. Uh, lung volume reduction surgery uh, is designed uh, in, to improve the exchange of air and gas in patients with emphysema. And because their disease is a disease of what we call air trapping, or there's too much air being brought into their lung, they're not able to be blown out due to the, the end stages of their disease. Uh, lung volume reduction surgery removes those enlarged portions of the lung, the more diseased portions of the lung, in order to get better um, gas exchange, uh, movement of air in patients uh, with severe emphysema. We do it on both sides, typically, lung volume reduction surgery. The operation takes about four hours or so, and a patient is typically in the hospital about a week. The second option is lung transplant. Uh, obviously, that's something that is performed when there are no other options available, and they have failed all medical as well as other potential surgical therapies. Lung transplantation is something that is also performed after close evaluation by pulmonologists, physical therapists, social workers and surgeons uh, and is something uh, that uh, again we reserve for patients with no other options. In pretty much all patients we prefer to perform a double lung transplant uh, if you're old, younger than 60 years old. Uh, if you're older than 60 years old uh, we tend to favor a single lung transplant. The reason for this is as patients become older a double lung transplant seems to be a little bit harder to recover from. It is an operation we perform on patients who have severe end-stage disease of both their heart as well as their lungs, and simultaneously so. Uh, for the most part, that is due to patients who have what we call congenital heart disease, or typically holes in their heart when they were younger that went unnoticed. And because there has been too much blood throw, flow through their lungs throughout their entire lives, there's been injury to their lungs. So removal of both the heart as well as the lung is, is typically uh, what is necessary in order to improve their quality of life and to extend their life. So the Transplantation Selection Committee is uh, an important check and balance uh, in assuring the quality of the decision making and the fairness of decision making going into uh, having a lung transplant. So every week, uh, a group of the physicians, as well as the social workers, nutritionists, physical therapists who have seen the, the patient who's potentially a candidate for transplant, all those people sit in a room and present the information of that patient uh, in order that we thoroughly evaluate all of the issues surrounding transplantation and making sure that we make uh, a very uh, cautious and informed decision about what is best for the patient. The most common complication of lung transplantation is the same type of complication we see with transplant of all solid organs, and that's rejection. The body is receiving uh, foreign material, and over time, uh, it may react against it or reject it. Uh, patients take medications, and typically a, a combination of three active anti-rejection medications in order to prevent this from happening, but although it is still possible. So rejection is relatively common after lung transplant, but at the same time it's typically quite treatable with adjustments of medications, uh, and that is something that we are constantly on the lookout for. Mm -hmm.